and welcome to WRPB and WRPB Studios. So with me, I have a young lady who I probably know. We're kind of debating if I met her 17 years ago or 15 years ago. I know it's more than 10. That's enough. Okay. So if it's 17 years ago, I met her when she was nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that story. <laughs> um, and it's interesting because over the years, though we didn't keep in touch in touch, but because of Facebook and stuff, we were able to keep in touch. And I watched you grow into a totally different person than when I met you, mm. which was kind of interesting. So let's talk about, you wrote two books that are in front of us. Let's talk about Cuba. What's with Cuba? Oh, gosh. That's a long conversation. We need a couple hours. Um, I first went to Cuba. I was a percussionist at the time, performing all over the world, pretty much. And uh, I got drawn into the Afro-Cuban rhythms and was really interested in learning them. And I had an opportunity to go, and so I went. OK. <coughs> so, because I'm ignorant. So for me, going to Cuba was not an easy thing to do. Um, that's true before 2012. Obama made it a lot easier after 2012. Americans were allowed to go on certain categories. Uh, I qualified as an artist, a musician, a writer. Um, I qualified on many levels to be able to go. Um, so I went, you know, to study primarily the music and the dance. I watched you fall in love with that country. Ah, uh, so many reasons. Um, Cuba's an amazing experiment in humanity. The people are under an incredible amount of stress every day and yet they have more joy and vitality and energy for life than most people I know here, including myself most days. <laughs> um, and their, their resiliency, their ability to deal with almost anything with a smile on their face and to find community and sharing opportunities and everything they do. So they might be waiting in line for the bank for, you know, to get in for hours, but they're out there chit-chatting, talking about their day and sharing stories. And it's like a big family, you know, really Cubans are very familial by, by nature. And when you go there, you're treated like family and it just feels no where you're inclusive, from. you know. It's no matter where you're from? Yeah, I think so. so. I mean, if you have the open heart, if you go there and you're, you know, a jerk, of course, you're not going to get treated <laughs> as well. But, you know, if you go there and you're kind and you're open and, and you're, you know, open to the experience, then Cuba opens right away to you. Well, most of what I saw when you posted was you dancing. <laughs> yeah, so, I like to dance. Okay, so did the Cuban rhythm, like, kind of enter you? Capture and, me? Yeah. Capture me? I'd say so. When I went there to study the drum, um, I've always danced since I was little. You know, when my mom th thought I was doing my homework, I'm in my room dancing with my <laughs> leggings, you know, <laughs> back in the day. Um, so I've always had that as part of my therapy and just self, self work um, and enjoyment, entertainment and all that. But when I went to Cuba to study the drum, I had a, um, a teacher there who tried to dance salsa with me and I felt so awkward. I realized I didn't know how to dance with a partner. I'd never done that, and I really hadn't worked on any of that. So when I got back to the States, I was like, I'm going to learn to salsa. And when I go back, I'm going to be able to dance with my instructor and, like, have a great time. And then when I went back every time after that, I, I kind of got more and more away from the drum and more into the dance, um, primarily because it's more expressive. I feel like I can relax more as a woman. The drum is so masculine, and I was really, really good at it, but it felt like half of who I was, you know? What's interesting is... I cheated and I got to see you guys because you now teach it. Yeah, a little bit. I'm learning to teach. I'm an assistant. I'm not a... Okay. I don't call myself a salsa teacher. I'm an assistant to a master <laughs> teacher. I'm looking to the other half of shaking his head. <laughs> it's but true, though. What's interesting to me was watching you guys interact with other people. And I hate to say it, but... It doesn't seem hard, hard, is it? Um, I mean, to what teach. What you teaching, no. Or to, to dance. To, to dance. I mean, dancing is only as hard as your ability to open up to feel the music, you know? So if you can just, like, relax and feel the music, then and you can count to eight. We say anyone that can count to eight and has a heartbeat, we can teach them to dance. And the same with the drum. I always said the same thing. If you, saw, if you have a heartbeat, I can teach you to drum, you know? Um, so... 
rhythm is so integral to who we are and it's so natural because we have this rhythm all the time going in our body and that's actually like a full expression of of humanity and in every culture around the world they dance so it's something that is very natural for us it's just learning different forms learning new muscle memory that stuff can take people different amounts of time depending on their personality and their, their but strengths. there's only like maybe i'm simplifying it but there was only like four different positions that you're going to go to at any specific in any specific dance or six different positions that you go to and then you come back well, the basic steps are the same. Right. You know, the foundational steps are the same. And in many styles of salsa, the count can be the same. But there's within salsa, there's salsa on two, there's um, son, there's many different forms within timba, all these different forms of salsa. And the way you dance is different to each one of those forms. So, yes and no. Your foundations, your basics, your counting can be universal in many cultures, but the expressions of that will be different. So Culturally, from each country, <coughs> Um, even within the different forms of salsa. So you took in, in my opinion, this whole Cuban culture, <laughs> okay? You wrote two books about your experiences, and now you're back in the States, and you're teaching salsa classes. Co-teaching salsa classes. You're co-teaching. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you talk about your teaching... Okay. My husband is the teacher. I'm his assistant, really. I mean, we teach together, and it's it's a great opportunity for me. I'm learning how to lead now. I'm learning how to teach. It's it's a really wonderful opportunity. But I know without his expertise there, you know, I'm not I'm not at the same level. So he's been doing it his whole life. He was raised in the culture, um, danced professionally since he was 15. So it's right. a you know it's a whole different thing. And that's one of the things I'm really proud to bring to the Treasure Coast because. There's something different when you get the transmission direct from the culture. It's just a different experience than when you get it after it's been sort of transmitted multiple times. And I was the same way with drumming, you know. Like if you take the rhythms from the culture itself and you learn them, it's just a different transmission. It doesn't mean it's better or worse, but it's a different transmission. Okay. So I'm really proud to have that here, to share that with the Treasure Coast. I think it's pretty cool. Only because you have a partner who's really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he's sitting there and he's like, all right, you get the spotlight, it's okay. But he's on his phone and he's saying things that he actually wants us to see. So, <laughs> turn your phone around. What was it that you wanted us to see? No, I just <laughs> want to say she's a t-shirt with me. Right. And she's an awesome t-shirt. Oh, okay. You know, so well, I watched you guys that day I went. And she asked me, to, to do I want to... Take, learn a couple steps, and of course I said no, because I, I embarrass myself enough on the air. <laughs> I don't need to embarrass myself anymore. Plus, for me, those things are hard because I only have 60% lung function, <clears throat> and I was just out of two strokes and two surgeries. Mm. So I didn't want to push you myself. Take your time. <laughs> but I was watching, and I stayed, you know, I wasn't going to stay. I just wanted to kind of reconnect, say hello, meet you. And um, I ended up staying for a bit to watch your interactions with the other people. And I was surprised at how, in such a short time, they were able to pick up some of these steps. <clears throat> and I'm like, I hate to say it, but I'm like, I could probably do this. Of course you can. I don't know that I can, but can. I said to myself, I could probably do this with the right teacher, mm -hmm. okay? It's like anything else. You know, if you have the right, there's a couple things in the world. If you have the right teacher and you have the right tools, you can do anything. Anything. Yep. Yeah, that's true. And you have to have the want and the, and the desire. So you, over and above this dancing, you wrote two books, which to me is like the most amazing thing in the world, that anybody <laughs> has the patience to write books. And I, I review a ton of authors. <clears throat> and I'm like, really? How do you sit down? And, I, and my life is a book. Well, all of our lives are amazing stories, right? It's, well, I don't know if my yeah. life is amazing story. It's one. It's a messed up story, but whatever <laughs> it is, there's a book there, and probably from being a survivor of sexual abuse as a kid, there's a lot of people that I can help, and I speak in front of groups and stuff. But I always say I want to put it in a book, and I, then because I do video, it was like, well, you know what? I can do a video about it. So I started that, and what happened was I got to a point when I'm going to explain what happened. And I had to stop. But I, then I realized I didn't have to explain what happened. People would understand it. So your trip 
to Cuba and you decide to write this book and some of the posts I watched when you're coming back and I got a real kick out of the old car. Mm. <laughs> okay. So do you know what year that car was? Oh, I don't know which one. There's so many. A red one. His car? I guess. Oh, yeah. That was a 1959 Chevy Impala. Okay. So just so you know, that is my <laughs> dad's dream car. You can talk. I need to go outside. Okay. Because my boss called me. Okay. Go use that door. Don't fall over anything. Okay. I guess you can edit that out, huh? Yeah. I, I don't know if I will. I'll think about it. <laughs> All right. You know, here it's about people knowing that you're just like them and you're, yeah. and you're human just like them. Yeah, that's cool. But, yeah, I got a kick out of that car because... That, my dad had a 57 Chevy Impala. That was his baby. And every Saturday, he'd go to work, take the train and everything. He'd come, oh no, he'd take his car on Saturdays. And he'd, he'd come home to his mother's house. He wouldn't come home. He'd go to his mom's house, and he'd be under that hood for hours. <laughs> yeah. That was his baby. Yeah. And okay. they are in Cuba. They're always fixing and <laughs> working together and taking it apart. <laughs> so now... I believe, and I could be wrong, and we're here kind of kind of getting the thought out about Cuba, The because your husband's Cuban, is the relationships between Cubans and in, in, a, in a relationship with a Cuban, is it more difficult? Like when you guys first met and connected, mm -hmm. was, his ling was his English good? Yeah, he speaks excellent English. He always okay. he's he taught himself to speak English because he was a professional dancer in Cuba and he worked with tourists for oh, okay. many years. Um, he danced in all the hotels and so he taught himself English. He also speaks Italian. He speaks a little French. Oh my God. And that's very I common. Speak English. That's very <laughs> very common in Cuba is for people to know multiple languages. Oh, um, they're amazingly intelligent. They can learn really quick. They're not as distracted by the constant presence of media and so social like, media. And if I see a so squirrel, they still have, have artistic, you know, like the, it's just it looks a very different, artsy. it's a very different culture. And that's changing with more cell phones and more technology coming in. They're, it's changing, but um, but they have an incredible aptitude for languages. I, like, I, amazing aptitude. I think what I watched, Cuba seems so artsy. As compared to... Well, there's, a, there's an appreciation for the arts more, <coughs> I would say, you know, not that there's not here, but there it is. It is the culture, you know, the expression of art, music, dance, um, you know, visual art, sculpt, like ever, all those different art forms are just, they are life there. And so, that's how people stay connected. That's how they express themselves because in a lot of places, they really have nothing else. You know, and I was just going to say, it's, it's, it's not a rich economy, so no. you have to figure out a way to entertain yourself. And it exactly. seems like... It's 7 o'clock and I'm just picking a time, and they're out, someone's playing guitar or drums, and that the whole, I don't want to say village, but that whole area of <coughs> housing is out, and they're all out together, and they're all connecting with one another. It's just more communal. It's just yeah. a more communal culture, you know. It's, yeah, and that it happens often where somebody will come out and play a guitar, and then somebody else walks by and starts singing a song and, yeah. <laughs> and you have like 10 guys there hanging on drinking rum playing music <laughs> it's not every day but it happens a lot and you well, know you it is just more it's just more the lifestyle there and because i think we used to have more of that oh we did you know back before sort of like technology took over i think we had more of that we had more music in the streets i was a musician way before i was a dancer and we used to go play in Osceola Street. We'd go play live, you know, downtown. We'd bring our drums down there and rock out. And, you know, we had more of that. And now it's like everyone's so, don't, be, don't make any noise, you know, don't play any music. And everything's DJs. And it's It just seems changed, like you're trying you know? to bring some of that. Not completely, but. Cuban communal culture back to what you do. Definitely. It's a big part of what Yusel and I are both very passionate about is we love being with our friends and our family and we love to create that feeling of inclusiveness and it's it's definitely one of the bonding parts of our relationship is that we both are naturally that kind of communally 
social, loving, sort of mama and papa bear kind of energy, like where we just love to share with other people and we love to invite people in to experience it and to make them feel good and to empower them to, to feel good in their bodies. You know, we love it. I we probably didn't it. see you after I initially met you for five years. Yeah, probably. And then we reconnected, went to lunch, and it was like we never... Because that's how real friends are. You can see not see them for years. And, and then you see them again, it's like, yeah, hey, what's up? You guys decide <laughs> to come up here and do um, salsa dancing and teaching class. And I'm like, well, this is something I think that people would be interested in. But, of course, getting you to the studio was like pulling teeth. <laughs> but I got you here. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry. And the, it, the interesting thing is <clears throat> there's so much more to you your knowledge of Cuba is really pretty immense for an American. It's true. Okay. And you can say what you want. I watched you dance. Oh, he's going to come back. I watched you dance, and you were very good. So whatever he makes a face, we don't want to deal with that. No, but you guys worked really well together. And it looked, it looked like the people that you were teaching, it was so simple for them and so easy for them to pick up. Like I watched them. All right, so here's the step. And they did that step, and there were kind of slip-ups, and then the second time they did it was 50 times better. Mm -hmm. And by the third time, they had that step pretty much down pat, mm -hmm. and they were ready for the next step. And yeah, it's muscle memory. It's just practice, repetition. We do a lot of repetition. We go over stuff a lot. We try to, you know, every class we try to remind them of what they learned the last class and then redo it again and again until it's just muscle memory and they're not thinking anymore they're just doing how long is the class um the one in port st lucy most of our classes usually go anywhere between 75 to 90 minutes so an hour a little over an hour to an hour and a half just depends on the energy sometimes we go a little longer sometimes you know if everyone's just overwhelmed we'll Okay, 75 minutes, that's good. Everybody's tired. <laughs> right. Because sometimes and people get overloaded, you know, when you're doing more complex stuff. When you take Mary and Joe, all right, and they come for the first time, do they leave after that 90 minutes basically knowing how to basically dance? They leave with enough knowledge to go out and dance so socially to at least do the basics. They're okay. not going to be doing flashy turns and, you know, skydives or anything. <laughs> but they'll leave with enough, you know, awareness of the basics to go out and have a good time dancing and to practice. How, in your guesstimate, how many classes does it usually take for someone to get really good? You can hold up your hands like five, ten. I mean, I think that's so variable. And it's, I wouldn't want to give an answer on that that's right. like defined because... We have, in Port St. Lucie especially, we have some dancers there who've been dancing a long time already. So they come in and, and for them to pick up the basics and get, you know, get the, the figures, it's a lot easier. Then we have people who, you know, never danced before. And, that wouldn't be me. You know, some of them are going to learn really fast and they're going to just be like, boom, they're going to move quick. And others, they might take two or three months just to get through the first few basic you know, figures and that kind of thing because of their aptitude or their interest or their amount of practice. So many variables. So I don't think I'd want to give a hard answer on that. Okay. I, I think that it's it's totally up case. to the individual. Um, it's totally relative to to so many factors. Okay, I'll so leave it at that. they take the class. They come two months. They're pretty decent. Where can you go to dance salsa? Mm, up here. Up here. There's actually a lot of places now. Where we spend most of our time is Cielo Lounge in Port St. Lucie on US 1, not too far from here. Right, and you teach your class there? We teach our class there on Monday evenings at 7 p.m. Um, and we also go there often on Friday nights socially just to dance and bring the community together. We bring our students from Hope Sound. We also teach uh, they, so sound. they teach salsa. They they play salsa music. On the, uh -huh, on Friday and Saturday nights, and they also have a, a bachata class and a salsa class on Wednesday nights. It's a different style than what we teach, but they do have another class there for for people that you know maybe are more interested in LA or New York style. Totally different styles. Interesting. Um, very the numbers, you know, the <coughs> counting is similar, but and some of the forms are similar, but they're very different styles. Okay, so we're getting to the top of our time. How do people find you? Ah. 
Well, you can come to Cielo on Monday nights and find us there at 7 o'clock. And that's um, on US1. On, mm -hmm, yeah. on US1. Okay. On Facebook and social media, we are the Breath of Cuba. And uh, you can also find us at Cuban Casino Salsa Rueda Treasure Coast. That's a Facebook group. Okay. We have a couple meetup groups, uh, Breath of Cuba, Cuban Casino Salsa, and Meetup. Um, and then you can just Google the Breath of Cuba and you'll find my YouTube channel, website, all that kind of information. Everybody, <clears throat> the worst you could do is go there and not enjoy it, which I, I didn't see happening when I went to visit. So uh, my scenario would be get your butt out there, register for one class, just one. At that point, you can make your decision on what you think and if it's for you. The other thing about dancing in, in any facet is that it's probably a lot more enjoyable than going to the gym and getting exercise. I think so. I mean, I go to the gym too, but it's it's more social. You know, as I was saying, Yusal and I are really passionate about building the community of dancers. So, you know, it's a place where you can go and you always have someone to talk to, to share with about life, you know, whatever you're going through, good or bad, you have friends there to go through it with you. So that's one of the things I think that's really special about the dance community in general, not just our dance community, but mm -hmm. the greater dance community all right. over Florida, all over the country, all over the world, is that it's this amazing family. And once you've stepped into it, you literally can go anywhere in the world and walk into a community of people that will receive you with love and joy. And that's an amazing so thing. Finish off with your books. So you wrote the first book, which is which one? The, um, the first one is The Breath of Cuba, One okay. Woman's Love Affair with the Magic Music and Men of Cuba. And the second one is Part Two, Passion Play. Um, very, very different times in my life. They were spanned of about four years. So These are my personal memoirs of my <clears throat> time in Cuba. So it's, it's not a... Um, I don't get into politics. I don't get into... A, a crazy amount of history. I skirt and touch it here and there, um, but it's mostly just really a, a perspective from an American woman who is, you know, obviously among the most privileged women in the world to be able to go there and experience what I experienced, um, and how I learned more about myself through the cross-cultural lens. Really, you know, dancing has taught me so much about relationship, about how to understand the balance of the masculine and the feminine. Um, how to work with that in myself, in my personal life, in my relationships. Um, and a lot of that I learned in Cuba. How do you get the book? Where you can get it? it on Amazon. Okay. Um, or you can get it direct from me, of course. On you, get it direct from you via one of your web, one of your Facebook? Or mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> or in person. There. I'm happy to sign them in person. That's always fun. So, and you also have a number to, if you want to text or yes. set an appointment. Yes, 561-317-7634 is our text number. And we're also on Google. <coughs> you can find us on Google under the breath of Cuba, Afro-Cuban dance. You know, again, it's a simple thing to learn something that you'll either enjoy or not enjoy, but you won't know it until you try it. And again, You're gonna love it. I went there and thought it was really difficult and didn't want to embarrass myself, even though I embarrass myself all the time. Um, but I would have tried had I not just been just out of two strokes. Well, you have another opportunity. Yeah. Every Monday night. <laughs> so I just canceled two cruises because I don't want to do anything to push myself till I'm a year out. <clears throat> After that, it doesn't matter. But check out the books. Check them out. Come to CeeLo? CeeLo. CeeLo. Yeah, whatever. It's on US-1. It's If you know where we are, they're just south of us in like three shopping centers south of us. Mm -hmm. I think you're before you're just north of Crosstown. Mm -hmm. Check them out. We gave you a phone number. We gave you a way to find them. It'll be on the screen. I'm telling you, the worst case scenario is it'll be too much for you to do. But it wouldn't matter because you won't tell anybody that, because I surely wouldn't. But the other case scenario is you'll have a good time, you meet some great people, and have a lot of fun. I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thanks, Everybody, Wayne. we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.